Hello there. It was all going so swimmingly for Boris Johnson until he told his Chancellor to surrender to a number 10 power grab. But maybe it is all going swimmingly for number 10, but more of that in a moment. Firstly, just to let you know I'm feeling better and will be back in full video mode in the next few days. And as ever, please kick that YouTube algorithm up the jacksey by giving this video a big fat like. And I do generally upload new videos every day, so please check back regularly. Now, while engaged in a cabinet reshuffle that was being touted more as a sort of St Valentine's Day paper cut than a massacre, it seems that the PM confronted his Chancellor of the Exchequer, Sajid Javid, with the demand that he stood his team of advisers down and replace them with number 10 stooges. Given stories that the occupant of number 11 Downing Street had thus far been a rather compliant sort of character, maybe Boris thought that Sajid would just say yes to what many are seeing as the dark hand of Dominic Cummings at work trying to unify all areas of government under one single point of control. So one assumes Mr Cummings had the builders and a sign writer on hand to convert number 11 Downing Street into 10B Downing Street, just an annex of number 10 with connecting doors and all. However, it turns out that Sajid was having none of it and he promptly resigned, leaving Boris with a bit of a hole in his government, especially with a budget to sort out in the next four weeks. But this possible if not expected, outcome will probably have been game played by number 10 anyway. And almost immediately, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury and MP for Richmond in Yorkshire, Rishi Sunak, was summoned to replace Mr Javid. Now, as I understand it, this is a substantial and meteoric rise up the ranks for one so junior as Rishi Sunak. But as the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Sunak will have been very closely involved in the formation of the upcoming budget due to be delivered to the nation on the 11th of March. So if Boris wanted to control number 11 with Javid in place, how much easier could it be with Sunak in there instead? But Boris might well have ended up dispatching a disgruntled former Chancellor onto the back benches. A former Chancellor ready to play a bit of havoc of his own, maybe. One thing it does do, though, is give Yorkshire another big hitter in government. Remember that Sunak's predecessor as MP for Richmond was one William Hague. And Brexiteers may be happier too, given that Rishi Sunak is one of them. Now, many are thinking that this could blow a bit of a hole in Boris's immediate plans. But given the stories circulating about this resignation being related to the appointment of advisers, then you have to seriously consider that this is all about the expansion of a sort of control freakery web of number 10 domination over every single aspect of government activity. So had the PM and his advisor Dominic Cummings not been, say, completely happy with Javid's budget proposals, then who knows how engineered this resignation situation might have been. After all, from what I can make out, it was sprung on Javid today that Boris wanted him to stay on in number 11 as long as he sacked his team of special advisers and replaced them with a joint number 10, number 11 team. So why leave that demand until today? Unless you were possibly looking for a prescribed response, maybe. Now, I have heard claims that this move of joining number 10 and number 11 makes sense because you need the ideas and the money working together in lockstep for the same aims. The difficulties between Tony Blair and Gordon Brown spring to mind here. But many may be uncomfortable with the idea of the Prime Minister turning his Chancellor into a number 10 assistant. Now, the Prime Minister also traditionally holds the title First Lord of the Treasury, and the Chancellor is the Second Lord of the Treasury. But the Chancellor has the position that has inherited most of the functional financial responsibilities from the old system of the Lord High Treasurer. 
Maybe Boris wants those powers too. Let's see if this web of control starts spreading any further. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it. So what do you think about this? Is it a Boris power grab? Please share and comment and thank you for listening. Please do like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.